Wake up, everybody! Welcome to Navy SEAL Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, David Rutherford. As a behavioral training specialist, motivational speaker, author, and life coach, my mission in life is to help you discover the behavioral truths behind what it takes for you to succeed in any environment imaginable. So stand by and let me help you embrace your fears, forge your self-confidence, and learn to live the team life. Hoo-ya! All right. Wake up, everybody. That's what I said. I said it's time to wake up. It's time to realize that things are happening across the country. Things are happening with the people that we love. Things are happening to the people that we care about. Things are happening to the people that you have in your life that are on your team that make the difference to you all the time. Things are happening to them right this minute. So it's time to wake up. It's time for you to realize that there is is a struggle going on. There is pain happening. There There are wounds that people are embracing and taking on board and they are open wounds. They are bleeding from their souls and they are struggling to survive, folks. So it's time to wake up. Listen. This show is not going to be the typical lighthearted, hoo-ya, motivational show it is, but I will motivate you. I promise you that. I will have you get off your butt and move out into life with a purpose and a chance to make a difference, to impact somebody that you care greatly about. I promise you I will do that for you. But this is a heavy show, and I hope you're prepared, folks. I hope you're ready because you need to be prepared because you have to begin to ask yourself, folks, You have to ask yourself because you need to know this. What is your breaking point? What is the point in your heart and in your mind where you break? What kind of influence comes out of nowhere, comes out from from living your life every single day? Where does that come from and, and how long can you endure? How much willpower do you have? The strength, the conditioning, how much experience, how much training do you have before you break? And trust me, I have a good friend that was a a central intelligence interrogator before. And he said to me, he said, guess what? He goes, Rut, guess what? Everybody breaks. Everybody has a breaking point. Well, folks, that's the truth. Now, here's the deal. That breaking point is enhanced when you face something that causes a wound. When you think, when you, when you face something that hurts you, that scars you, that opens up your soul, that opens up your body, literally on some occasions, and scars who you are. It changes who you are. And those wounds need to be controlled. Those wounds need to be treated. Those wounds need to be addressed at such a level that it, it, we need an entire team around it in order to, to really make an impact on its beginning to, to, to mend those wounds. Now, I asked you, what is your breaking point? Now think back, ease back into one of the nightmares of your past. That's right, ease into it. Control your descent down into that painful memory. Allow it to come to the forefront of your consciousness. Allow it to swell up and think to yourself right now, the struggle, the pain, what you endured, the hardship that was in that moment. And think about what it did to you. Think about how deep, you were scarred. Think about the pain, the riveting pain that shot through your spinal column, that, that, that overwhelmed your emotion, that, 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 that almost broke you down. That, in fact, it did. It did. It got you down on your knees to where you were struggling, where you were crying out, where you were screaming to yourself, make it stop. Make it stop. Now think about in that moment, folks. Think about what it did to you, how it changed you, how it changed your life forever. Because it's real, folks. That is a real memory in your life. It is a real pain that you felt. It is a real wound that you have suffered from. And folks, that's okay. It's cool. It's all right because we've been there too. Some of us greater than others. But we all have wounds. But for those of us who understand real trauma, who understand a higher level of trauma, trauma that changes your life forever, folks, it's real. 
It's real, and it's called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And it is a real trauma that we have faced in our lives, and the fear we face from it, from that trauma every single day with the nightmares or the anxiety or the bad relationships or the alcohol or whatever it is we do in order to, to, to try and heal or mend ourselves in those times. And most of the time it has to do with anesthetization and trying to, to, to cloud our mind so it, uh, it doesn't become real. So it's not real in the forefront of our consciousness. So it doesn't affect us as much anymore. And, and because as, you know, as a survivor of this type of thing, we, have to, we, 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 we just want it to go away. We just want it to stop the, the chaos in our minds. But folks, it's real. And it's okay because it's a part of our lives. Because you can't erase scars that happen. Look at your body right now. Look at the scars from your childhood. The scars from playing sports in your life or the scars from being in combat and where they are. If they're external, look at those things. Look at the scars that you have and, and you can reflect on what you faced and what you went through and, and either the stupidity or, the, ang or the, the craziness or the chaotic nature of behavior or, or the choices that you made that made that scar present in your life. And it's real. And it's okay. Because wounds are common in life. Wounds happen, whether it's a physical wound or a mental wound or a spiritual wound. Folks, these are the wounds that we have, and it's all right. It's okay to have them. They're real enough, and it's, it's important to have these wounds because these wounds are, 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 are a testament to living your life. Now, many times when it comes to PTSD, you didn't choose to, to have these wounds happen to you. You didn't choose to have this, this gaping, open sore on, in, on your heart and on your mind. But it happened. And it's there and it's a part of you. And just like you would with any other wound in your life, whether well, how you treat it with aloe or ointment or a Band-Aid, folks, we need to treat PTSD. You need to treat this wound, folks. You have to. Because if you don't, that sore remains open. It remains an open, festering, just, just, just crazy, just, just nagging, horrific, oozing, you know, smelling of gangrene, and just it, just it, it just rotting flesh and rotting spirit and who you are. That's what PTSD can PTSD will do to you unless you heal that wound. And it's okay because it's real. The wound is real. And now it's time to get help, right? It's time to get out. It's time to, to wake up, to open your eyes to this reality of this scar, this negative scar that has, has tortured you for however long it has. And it's time to get some help. It's time to reach out. It's time to uh, bring on a team. It's time to live the team life to embrace that fear of, of, of getting help, to embrace that fear of the acknowledgement that you've suffered to other people, to embrace that fear to, that, you, that you're afraid that it just might not happen, that you might walk into the door of that one clinician or that one psychologist or psychiatrist and you sit down and in five seconds, you know, they don't know what the hell they're talking about when it comes to your world and then the wound opens up and you get angry and you get mad and frustrated and you storm out the door and the wound is still weeping but then you got to try again and you got to get back in there because PTSD is real and it's everywhere it's all around us folks it's it's with my friends who have been to combat it's with it's with my friends who have been abused it's with my my friends who have been tortured in some capacity in their life it's real it's real and so I want to acknowledge that reality and acknowledge it in such a way that, that, that I want you to know we're here. We're here. Those of us at Team Frog Logic who care about you, who want you to heal, we're here. And that's why we're on the air today. So folks, this show and next week's show are going to be two of the most powerful shows we've done here on, on Navy SEAL Blog Talk Radio. They're shows about PTSD. 
This is show one, and it's called Negative Scarring. And the idea behind this show is really to show the impact of what this wound is, to show the, 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 the nature and the debilitating facts involved in PTSD and, and how it's ravaging our veterans, how it's ravaging you know the people who, in our lives, the children out there who are being abused, the spouses who are being abused, the, the women who are being abused out there. And this is a serious, serious problem, folks. So we need to address it. We need to get on board and start beginning to teach these people, teach ourselves how to heal. And heal in such a way where that negative scarring can ultimately flip over and become a positive scar in our life. And we'll talk more about that next week. So, so this week is, that's how we're going to do it. First, we're going to define what PTSD. And, we're, and instead of Wikipedia this, this week, I'm going to use the National Institute of Mental Health to define what PTSD, what are some, what thing, what goes on in yourself and in your brain and all those things. Then we're going to move into how Navy SEAL, you know, oh no, why PTSD is so important to recognize and be aware of that it's reality of your life or, or in your friends' lives or in your coworkers' lives and, and what you can do to start getting motivated. Then we'll talk about how Navy SEALs deal with PTSD. And, and you can imagine over the past 13 years or back in Vietnam or in World War II, this is a serious, serious thing. And so it's a it's a huge it is a huge component of of when you become a warrior poet that you will have to deal with if you go to combat in some capacity whether you may you may be the lucky one who is able to cope with it or your your stress conditioning is is built up to enough where where it doesn't affect you at the highest level but you might not be you might be the person that struggles with it or or it gets beaten down and I'm going to tell you a story about a friend of mine who it got the better of and then alas, what we'll do is we'll go into, you know, the frog logic concept, which is, which is my motivational philosophy that I've cultivated over the last 20 years and combine that with 70 years of operational training and elite lifestyle performance from the UDT SEAL teams. So I've formed this thing called frog logic. And it's a way of thinking that helps you endure in life. It helps you cope. It helps you heal these wounds of life. And it helps you stay motivated through thick and thin in any environment imaginable. That's what frog logic is. And if you're interested, go to our website at teamfroglogic.com. Learn more. Listen to the re- my older podcast. You know, watch my videos on YouTube. Download my book and, and see what, what the types of things that we're offering for free to people out there in order to help them get through the day to fight off or fend off the negative insurgency that is constantly coming after us. So that's going to be our show today. And I just hope everybody's fired up. So let's get right into defining what PTSD. And this is based, like I said, off the the, the National Institute of Health website. Uh, it's a .gov website. So here we go. Definition. When in danger, it's natural to be afraid, to feel afraid. This fear triggers many split-second changes in the body to prepare and to defend against the danger or to avoid it. This fight-or-flight response is a healthy reaction meant to protect a person from harm. But in post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, this reaction is changed or damaged. People who have PTSD may feel stressed or frightened even when they're no longer in danger. PTSD develops after ter- a terrifying ordeal that involves physical harm or the threat of physical harm. The person who develops PTSD may have been the one who was harmed. The harm may have happened to a loved one or to the person that they may have witnessed a harmful event that happened to the loved ones or strangers around them. PTSD was first brought to the public public attention in relation to war veterans, but it can result from a variety of traumatic incidents such as mugging, rape, torture, being kidnapped, held captive, child abuse, car accidents, train wrecks, plane crashes, bombings, natural disasters such as floods or earthquakes or any other thing that really changes who you are, folks. Trauma. Trauma. And this trauma is not just physical harm. This trauma is a deep-rooted wound. That encompasses the entirety of who you are. The entire frog logic triad. Your body, your mind, and your spirit. That's what PTSD does. That's what it affects. All right. From a genes perspective, currently many scientists are focusing on genes that play a role in creating fear memories. Understanding how fear memories are created may help refine 
refine or find new interventions for reducing the symptoms of PTSD. So they talk about stathamine, a protein that, that forms fear memories. They talk about GRP or gastrin-releasing peptides, that, which is a signal, signaling chemical in the brain released during emotional events. And they also talk about a, a version of, of 5-HTTLPR gene, which controls levels of serotonin, serotonin, a brain chemical related to mood that appears to fuel the fear response. So when you're in the mix of all of this, that's what's getting affected. This is down to the molecular level, folks. This is not just something that, you know, it's not causing any major damage internally. That's a lie. It is. It's affecting your brain and who you are because your brain isn't prepared to deal with such radical events in your life. Okay? So it, it, it changes. Now, within the brain... What happens? So they're studying parts of the brain involved in dealing with fear and stress. Also helps researchers better understand the possible causes of PTSD. One such brain structure is is the amygdala. Known for its role in emotion, learning, and memory, the amygdala appears to be active in fear acquisition or learning to fear or learning to fear an event such as touching a hot stove, as well as the in the early stages of fear extinction or learning not to fear. All right. And that's a big deal. Also, another part of storing uh, extraction or storing extinction memories and damp storing extinction memories or dampening the original fear response appears to involve the prefrontal cortex or the PFC of the brain involved in tax, tasks such as decision making, problem solving, or judging. Certain areas of the PFC play slightly different roles. For example, it deems when it deems a source of stress controllable, the medial PFC suppresses the amygdala and alarm center deep in the brainstem and controls stress responses. The ventromedial PFC helps sustain long-term extinction of fearful memories, and the size of this brain area may be affected in doing so. So folks, we're talking about some serious, serious brain brain challenges going on when you when you go through a post when you're dealing with post-traumatic stress, when you're in the midst of that trauma, when something's happening. Let alone when we think about people that are suffering from traumatic brain injury. And there's some statistics out there, folks, that, that there are uh, some doctors that I, um, I'm familiar with. One in particular, this guy, amazing physical therapy uh, therapist out there. His name's Ray Crowley. He does uh, hyperbaric uh, chamber treatment for people with t- traumatic brain injuries up in Delray Beach. So check him out online. And he was saying, he put me in touch with one of the, the leading doctors of, of hyperbaric treatment. And this doctor told me that there are uh, anywhere from 500 to 850,000 veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan that are suffering from traumatic brain injury. Now, what that is, is that's a blast wave ripping through their cranium, altering their brain with coup, counter coup, causing flood tissue damage, scarring, actual scarring in the brain that will impede their brain function. Now, what do you think happens combined with the fact that you just got blown up? Now you are you have a physical impe- impediment of, of brain function, and you combine that the fact with now the nightmares and the anxiety falling within. We're talking about chaos in your brain and reliving that. Think about the power that that is and how it can overwhelm a human being. In fact, the, the statistic now is that we're losing 22 veterans a day. Folks are committing suicide. Let me repeat myself so everybody out there hears it. My team out there hears 22 veterans a day are committing suicide. That's more than we're losing on the battlefield in Afghanistan, folks. That's wrong. That's on set. And why is that happening? Because this wound is so deep, folks. This wound is so deep. So, you know, to help you out, to help you recognize within yourself if you're suffering from PTSD or, or if you're suffering or you know a coworker or family friend, here are the signs and symptoms that they list on that website, all right? Signs and symptoms. Number one, re-experiencing symptoms, flashbacks, reliving the trauma over and over again, including physical symptoms like a racing heart or sweating or, or bad dreams or frightening thoughts. Man, I, I read these and it's like it's an understatement, man. It's an understatement because I know I know within myself or within friends I know or whatever, man, you want to talk about anger. You want to talk about getting back from combat and all of a sudden trying to reintegrate into society and some idiot cuts you off in line in a Starbucks. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to rip his head off, right? That's the reality of this. So, and, 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 and you know what? And when it gets too overwhelming, what do we do? We go out, we anesthetize ourselves with alcohol or drugs or whatever it is to try and quiet the storm in our brains. 
And some people are worse than others. Some people go all the way and actually commit suicide. They end their lives, folks. They end their lives because the wound is so deep. All right. Number two, avoidance symptoms. They stay away from places, events, or objects that, that are reminders of the experience. Feeling emotionally numb, feeling strong guilt, depression, or worry, losing interest in activities that were, that were enjoyable in the past, having trouble remembering the dangerous event. You talk to somebody over, you talk to somebody who uh, saw their, their best friend vaporized in front of them. And you ask them, hey man, you want to go to a picnic today? Or you, you, you talk to the child that was, that was beaten for 15 years of their life by their stepfather or foster care parents or by their regular parents. Beaten with a belt or a whip or whatever, a wrench. Hey, you want to go see your parents and celebrate Christmas? Do you, huh? Think about that, folks. Think about what you're asking the bad person to do. So no wonder they want to be numb. No wonder they feel this guilt or the worry or the hyperarousal symptoms that I'm going to talk about next. And these are easily startled, feeling tense or on the edge, having difficulty sleeping or having angry outbursts. I mean, think about when was the last time, if you're suffering from PTSD, when was the last time you had a good night's sleep? Where the wounds in your brain were so bad that it just simply would not allow you to relax. It would not allow you to quell the violence of your mind. I mean, that is a challenge, folks. That is unbelievably difficult. And it's one of the most dramatic things that can happen to a human being that they don't get sleep. That's the time where your brain heals. That's the time where your soul heals. That's the time where your body heals, where the wounds heal. It's where you recover, right? When you can't even do that, your body can't even process this recovery. So this is a powerful, powerful thing. And if you want to know more, folks, I, I, I highly recommend you get out there and you do the research. You can go to Wikipedia. they got a great page on post-traumatic. You can go to the National Institute of Health. You can go to the Wounded Warriors. You can go to uh, 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 SWO, Special Operations Wounded Warriors, great organization that my buddy out there, Brian, has started to help warriors deal and cope with, with PTSD and injuries, man. There, there are organizations everywhere, but you have to educate yourself. You have to recognize what these signs and symptoms are. You can't just blow them off because you're afraid to deal with them. Because the only way, folks, that we are going to heal this problem is if we get proactive, if we get hardcore, if we get determined and we, we make the effort to move past our own fears and get help either ourselves or get help for the people we love, period. All right. So... That's why PTSD is so important in your life. That's why it's important for you to recognize what's going on, the impact, the, the detriment to you. And if you don't know, that's, man, that's, you're just allowing that wound to continue to fester. All right? We, we're, all wounds in all life require healing. I mean, think about ancient Native Americans and how they would get, get healing properties off the, the land and they would make these salves and they'd put certain things on mud and aloe plants and the Polynesians and all this stuff. And they would be people that's been a, a requirement of human existence since we've been, you know, upright is figuring out how to heal our wounds. Because when, if you can't, if you can't want, operate, if you can't, if you can't perform, then you're not going to survive. And that's how significant PTSD is. That's how significant it is. All right. Now, now listen, if you yourself are suffering or you've got friends or family, you know, you got to understand our coworker. This is not something that you, you bum rush into people. You don't, you don't steamroll them, especially when you're not coming from a place that can have some connectivity with these people. You got to have these, 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 a childlike sympathy, right? When your child or your children are struggling and dealing with nightmares or something like that, you don't bum rush them and, and sit them and, and have an intervention with your four year old in order to, you know, tell them to, hey, suck it up and you'll just, you know, suppress it and put it down and lock it away. And guess what? It's going to you'll be all right, because in, in a month that that those those nightmares are right back. you got to calm them. You've got to make them feel trusted. You've got to make them feel warm and loved. You got to let those people feel loved. Right. Your children. The same is true for people with PTSD, folks. You got these. Remember, they, we they, people are in this trauma, this turmoil, this chaos in their mind. 
And so you have to get out there and approach them with open arms, with the love in your heart and the faith that you will not be distracted or detracted or pushed away from their battle that they're going to rage out on you because of their fear of addressing this wound. Because in many cases, folks, the first, the first band-aid, if you will, is that, is love. Think about that. Think about in your life what, what just a little bit of love shining on somebody else has done for you. Think about the healing properties within that, folks. That's powerful. So just start there. Don't be afraid to approach these people. Don't be afraid if you're dealing with it to approach someone you love and ask for help without judgment, folks. All right. And many times out there, what, what I see all the time and I had this great conversation with a, a close friend of mine yesterday about this was, you know, our perceptions of, of people that are struggling with PTSD are, are usually really wrong. Our perceptions of ourselves dealing with it are even more wrong, especially, remember, PTSD can cause all kinds of illogical behavioral patterns, all kinds of illogical ideas or thoughts or things. I mean, you might be thinking something's there and it's really not. You know, when when uh, the sound of a car ignites it or the sound, you know, some kind of uh, just somebody saying something that you don't agree with, all of a sudden it just explodes in you. And that's irrational. It's illogical. But it's real. And so you got to deal with that, folks. And the best way when, when we do is we got to not be afraid to approach this with love, to approach it without judgment. Because if you're the one who's reaching out to a coworker, if you're the one that's pulling somebody into the fray in order to help them heal, you cannot have judgment. No matter what they went through, no matter what, if you haven't been through what they've gone through, you don't know. But what you can do is you show them love. You show them gratitude. You show them, you show them that childlike sympathy or empathy or however you want to describe. It. You bring them in, you give them a big fat hug, and you say, Don't worry, we're gonna get through this together. And that's powerful. That's the healing. That's the band-aid. That starts the process. All right? That starts the process. All right. Now, a big idea out there with people is people want to know how Navy SEALs deal with PTSD. They want to know how Navy SEALs or Green Berets or, or, or what, what we go through or, or MARSOC, Recon or, you know, Delta Six, all those people, how we deal with PTSD. And I'll tell you what, there's, it starts within, within our conditioning, within, our, our, within going through BUDS. We, you know, the whole training is designed on, based on this stress conditioning model that the more you stress a human being out, that the more their brain regulates stress in a way that it doesn't overwhelm them. So we can operate under fire. We can act in under stress. And we can do those things. And, and that's what the whole training process is, is built on. And, and, and next week's show, I'm going to talk about a guy named Dr. Charles Morgan from Yale, who's one of the leading PTSD doctors in the country. And, you know, he did this amazing research on, on Green Berets going through SEER school a bunch of years back, well, where he proved this point that soft operators cope with combat stress better than everybody else. And it's because of this training, this conditioning. And it's amazing how that works, right? So, you know, that really is where it starts. But then you fast forward and you get into combat. And you're actually in the fight, so to speak. And you're dealing with the stress, the actual stress of combat or the physical injuries of losing friends or the physical injuries of friends being, you know, really injured. And I tell you what, that hits you on a whole nother level. And it affects you. Now, some men are, 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 are have a better way of, 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 you know, coping with that than others, and some of us don't, man. And the reality is that it's real, and it's going to happen. But, but the greatest thing that we have going for us are our brothers, are the guys that are next to us, the guys that will come up to us, put their hands on us, and tell us they love us, and it's okay. You're going to be okay. Don't worry. We got this. You can do it. Don't worry. It's okay. We still love you. You're still part of the brother. You're still part of the team. And that's pivotal, folks. Because that love, that, that, that availability, that camaraderie, that brotherhood, that's what makes us strong. 
And it makes us strong for all the reasons I've talked about in all the shows before this, is that that's what gets you to run into gunfire in the first place, the love of your brother next to you. And that's what gets you to, to, to endure the pain of combat itself as your brothers, the camaraderie, that they know what you've been through. They feel the scars too. They're all over their souls, riddled with scars. I mean, folks, think about the people that have three and four and five combat deployments. The people that have several hundred combat missions. Guys that have been blown up multiple times. Guys that are, 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 are struggling internally. Guys that have shot a ton of people. Women that have been blown up. Women that have been in combat most of the time. Women fighter pilots that have dropped bombs on people's heads. Think about all that. I mean, that's a lot to deal with, but you have your brothers. You have your sisters. You have the people that are a part of your team to help you. So, folks, that's critical. Now, the challenge, the challenge is when you come home. When you reintegrate into your lifestyle, into the regular civilian life. So one minute there, you're pursuing really evil, bad people, and you're ready and prepared to kill them at the moment's notice, and you're, that's what your mission is, is to get rid of the enemy, and then the next minute you're home and you're trying to, to, to you're picking up your child and taking them to the park and putting them on a swing set. And then looking over to the side of the park and seeing a couple deadbeats smoking dope on their car and, and, and loitering and throwing trash and drinking beers right at your park, and guess what? There's your enemy now. But you're, you still have to cope with your child. So imagine the challenge. Imagine the challenge of dealing with other, other things that you've had in your life, with whether you've been abused, spousal abuse, and so you finally break free, or you know your husband's been out, and they've, they've gone, and they're, they're, they're heavy drinkers, they're alcoholics, and they go out drinking after, after a horrible day work because they're in a, a horrible job that they don't like, and they're not man enough to change it, and, and they come home, they drink, and they beat their wives, and then so that woman has to wait at 6 o'clock every single day wondering whether or not she's going to take the beating of her life, or possibly get killed. Think about how destructive that is. Think about the destructor, destruction, the behavioral patterning that that causes, how it alters how we are, how it, how it forces us, whether in, unless we become numb to the pain in some capacity, we're going to lose our minds. And in many cases, folks, that's what happens. Or we try and numb ourselves to the point to where there's just nothing left. Where we have nothing left in our souls and we're empty. And I have a buddy out there, Jeff. And last year, Jeff, he had suffered the pain after doing 20-some years in the SEAL teams. The pain had gotten so hard for him that Jeff drank himself to death. And I don't know if anybody out there listening to me right now knows a friend like that. Or knows a friend that committed suicide or hung themselves or whatever. But drinking yourself to death takes an incredible endurance and focus. It's traumatic. And my friend Jeff, who was one of the funniest human beings I've ever known in my life, who was filled with life, where every time I was around him made me smile and happy and made me feel love and feel a part of the brotherhood and made me feel like, I, dude, this guy is awesome. I just love being around him. Oh, man, high fives all the time. He drank himself to death. Drank himself to death. Now think about that, folks. Think about what it takes to do that. These are real things. These are real issues. PTSD is real, and there are people that are struggling right now as we speak that are in the grips of this pain. Their wounds are wide open and bleeding profusely the pain of their soul and their spirit, and they need help. All right. So the frog logic concept. Again, folks, this is 20 years of my personal experience, 20 years of my not only just my ups, Right. My ability, you know, the, the, the times that were good for me in life. But this is 20 years of my downs, my rock bottoms, my living in the bottom of a bottle of Jack Daniels in college, the pain I went through and the chaotic nature of my life in the teams. You know, the, the af getting out of the teams and not knowing who to identify or what I was or who I was. I mean, that's where this stuff is coming from. And I combine it with 70 plus years of other stories other experiences from my brothers 
and other experiences from the brothers from, from the other units, my other close friends who are from the Marines and the Air Force and Army. And I listen to these people and I listen intently because I care because they are my brothers and sisters and I hear what they have to say and I take it on board and that's why I've created the Frog Logic concept is to help people embrace their fears, forge their self-confidence and learn to live a team life and to do it with a motivational recognition that life is hard, that the negative insurgency, that old Mr. Murphy is out there getting ready to stomp on our heads at any single minute, but with a team And with this confidence and with the ability to embrace fear in your life, you will be okay. That's what the Frog Logic concept is. And if you want to know more, please check us out at teamfroglogic.com. You can see everything that we have available there. All right. So this week's four concepts to help you cope with real-world trauma or PTSD, the open wounds, the festering wounds as they're happening in the moment, so to speak. First, concept one, you got to be truthful. Now, what do I mean by that, folks? You've got to be 100% honest with what's happening in your life. You cannot cower. You cannot run from it. You cannot deny the fact that what is going on is trauma. It's happening. You're in the midst of it. And that whether it's reoccurring or you're, and it comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden you have to say to yourself, this is real. This trauma is in me and it's happening. This is the reality of my life. This is who I am. This is what I have to deal with. And when you accept that reality and you acknowledge what's happening, then folks, you're ready. You're ready for concept two. And that's to just be, just be, just be in that moment. Just recognize that the moment is there. It's happening. Stay calm. Take a deep breath. Let that wave crash over your soul. Let that pain slide off your back. You know, let that wound subside just a little bit. And let it pass just enough to where the next thing you can do in concept three is you can put your armor on. That's right, put your armor on. And how you put your armor on, folks, is that you think right in that moment, right in the hardest moment, right when you don't think, where you've just taken that breath, you know the reality of what's happening, it's real, it's coming, it's coming down on your heart, you throw your armor on by loving yourself. And use those words, folks. Use those words to describe who you are and what you're capable of. Say to yourself in your mind, I love myself. I am loved. I have love in my heart. I have love in my soul. I have love. I have love from God. I have love from my family, my friends. And as that sea starts to settle, that love will, will, will steady your bow. It will hold your, your, your rudder straight and it'll give you some strength that you need. It'll, it'll be the first direct p- pressure that you apply to that open wound. So you push down on that wound or right on your heart with everything you got by saying and telling yourself, I love myself. Love is in my heart. Love can teach me to endure this. And that love will get you through. That love is your armor. It's the armor given to us by God. All right. Concept four. And this is where this is critical. This is critical because right in those moments where, where the chaos is happening and the madness is ensuing and, and, and you've, you've, you've all of a sudden you're like, all right, this is my reality. This is my truth. And, 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 and all right, I'm just going to, I'm going to be in this moment. I'm going to stay calm. I'm going to take that breath. All right. And I love myself. I, I do. I have love in my heart. I'm capable of more. I love my, my family loves me. My team loves me. Then begin to heal. Now, how do you do that? You heal your body, you heal your mind, you heal your spirit, okay? Heck, man, in that moment, stop what you're doing and, and, and put your PT clothes on and go for a run. Or heck, go to the gym and go PT or go for a swim. Get that body solid, begin to build it back up. 
right? If you can't, man, drop down and do 25 push-ups, but break the break the, the cycle of madness with exercise, with physicality, or go for a walk out in the middle of the in, in the in the in the middle of the woods somewhere, or go down to the beach and put your feet in the ocean floor and put your body in something that's perfect, that's beautiful, that's natural, or and physical. And then heal your mind. And tell yourself, be repeated, have a positive mantra going that I will be healed. I am going to heal myself. I am seeking help. The, the treatments I'm getting are working. The, 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 the medical attention I have is, is worth. I have faith in that. It's going to happen. I will get better. Heal that mind. And then lastly, folks, you got to heal that spirit. That's right. This is one of the most critical things. This has been the, the number one thing that has helped me in my struggles in life, especially over the last years, is that I heal my spirit with some prayer. And I have faith that, that it's going to be okay. I have faith and I give thanks to my, my being above dirt and that, that it'll pass and that, you know, that God has forgiven me of whatever I've done wrong. That, that no matter what, if as long as I have that faith and I feel God's love, that it's going to be okay. And I ask for thanks. And I give thanks for the fact that I'm going to make it through this, that I'm going to endure, that I'm going to be better. And that faith kind of builds me up. It begins to heal me. That faith is the tourniquet of your wounds. As a combat medic, I've, I've been in a situation before where tourniquets saved my friends' lives. And that's that faith, folks. You apply that faith to your wound, and it's the tourniquet. It will stop the hemorrhage. It will stop the pain. It will begin to get you feeling better. So those are the four concepts, folks help you cope with PTSD or some real-world trauma and to help you begin to recognize that negative scarring, scarring within PTSD is a part of your life. It is what it is, folks. It's going to happen. It's the reality, but it's okay. Because in those moments, you can be truthful. Just be in the moment. Put your armor on by loving yourself and then begin to heal your body, your mind, and your spirit. All right. Well, folks, I'm going to take a, a real short break. That was heavy. I'm going to get a glass of water, stretch out, and do a push-up or two. Uh, I'll be right back. Hang on. Hang what you got. All right. All right. All right. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to Navy SEAL Blog Doc Radio. I'm your host, David Rutherford, Navy SEAL, behavioral training specialist, author, life coach. Um, you know, I, it's just this is a heavy topic, and I, and I really wanted to bring in uh, somebody that I know, trust, and love and that can, can shed some light a little bit from a couple different vantage points. And, and I just, uh, you know, I just want to welcome on board Brad Christian, owner and my co-partner with the Adventure Operations Group. I mean, this guy's an amazing human being. So, Brad, welcome. Welcome on air, buddy. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, Dave. Uh, good to talk to you this morning. Well, I, I, brother, I just, I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. And for all those listening, Brad's a former Green Beret and, and uh, security contractor, been overseas many, many times and has seen a, a bunch of stuff. And, and Brad, I just, the first question I'd just like you to expand on a little bit is, is just, you know, what is the reality of PTSD and how it's affecting not only the active duty guys, but guys that have gotten out and are no longer tied to the comrade camaraderie of being within the unit and are trying to search for jobs and working within the security world or wherever. How, what are you seeing out there? Is this, is this a real problem we're facing? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, the, the, the simple answer is the reality is changing every day for us. Uh, there are some, some really smart people doing some really great work. Some you've already mentioned on your show talking about the effects of stress and we see it in industry. Uh, I think just as much as we're seeing it in the military, and I think the questions that industry are having right now perhaps are even more challenging. How do we deal with PTSD from someone that perhaps who's developed it after they got out of the military? And these are some real challenging questions. Um, it is 
it is something that I'm I'm glad to say people that, that you and I know and respect and our peers and mentors and in, in, in the communities that we've come from are becoming much more vocal uh, about encouraging people to, to seek help, uh, and that's great. And I think PTSD is something that we're learning more about every single day. It's evolving every single day. I think you know, that you look to the left and right, we don't, you and I and our friends can't, can't think of someone who's not been affected by stress or who's not currently being affected by stress. So the reality is, I think, for me, Dave, it's twofold. It's, it's very, very serious, but there, it's filled with hope because of all of the focus that's going into helping guys deal with this. Um, and so, you know, thanks to you in particular for doing this show today because I think every single shred of awareness that, that we can put on this topic helps everyone, families and the people dealing with it as well. And I'm and I'm glad you you brought that up too. I mean, the one thing that I you know I I haven't mentioned throughout this show, and it's really going to be a huge part of next week's show. I've got some amazing guests coming on next week. Uh, a woman who uh, lost her husband uh, back in 2008 is is coming on the show, and she's got a a, a daughter. And I'm going to have another expert, uh, a guy who's helped create a program to cope with. PTSD and dealing with the loss of, of, of members of the unit, uh, uh, a guy by the name of Wally Graves, who, who ran the NSW Family Kind of Services Foundation for a lot of years, and he's coming on next week. And, uh, you know, I think it's cool that you mentioned that with the families because, you know, that they're, they're being affected you know, at a high level too. I mean, think about the kids and the the wives in particular who are dealing with these guys and and women or the the husbands that are dealing with these veterans or 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 the people that have suffered other abuses that they come into their lives and they just don't know what they do. They can't approach them. They're you know they they can't figure out how to penetrate into this awful trauma. And so you know, I think you know they're really they they need help as well too. So, you know, to, to, you know to, to continue on your messages, we need to not only help the people struggling with PTSD, we need to help all the people that are, are within their, their world, within their groups and organizations, and help them as well, too. Um, now, Brad, the, only, the other question I want to ask you while I got you on the air here is, is I want to ask you in, in terms of, you know, as, as, as you've seen things, and in, 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 I've seen this a lot with, with guys that I know, is that later on as as people have struggled with this with this you know horrific you know uh challenge of PTSD you know is is does can faith play a huge role in coping with this point i i think um you know for me personally and and i know for you faith plays a plays a big role because uh you know i think you know in terms of in terms of that feeling of being overwhelmed or overcome or overcome by events i mean i think that's certainly a um, a, a common thread amongst PTSD sufferers, and you have to believe that your life is not defined by that negative scarring, and that there is hope for the future. And for me, that's grounded in my faith. And I know I, you know, I am I am accountable for for so many other things in life, and I I hope to accomplish so many other things in life as as I know you do, and all of us that have, have been over, and and those that are still serving. And so. Um, Faith is what's going to get you through. You're not defined by this negative scarring. You will, you know, draw strength from your friends and your teammates, and you'll make new teammates, and and that's going to empower you, know, both you and your family and everyone else that you come in contact with. So it's absolutely, I think, the most important part. Well, awesome, Brad. I really appreciate it, buddy. Um, we're going to shift over, and i I got a couple other callers here waiting, and we've got a ton of questions on the Internet. Um, I just really thank you for, for being on, Brad. Uh, you know, i, I got to tell you, buddy, in, in, in dealing with a lot of the stress I've had in my life, you've been a, just a, an amazing help to me. Um, and just being able to have you there and have you there to talk to and, and know that you care about me has just been a, an, an overwhelming sense of uh, pride and joy and happiness and love, brother. And I just I want to thank you for that, Brad. I really do, buddy. You bet. I enjoy talking with you. Uh, I can't wait till next week's show and uh, keep up the good work, man. You got it. Have a great day, bud. Take care. Out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to shift over to some questions on the internet. Belly, do we got any questions on Twitter there? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, how can friends help a friend with combat-related PTSD? 
All right, how can friends help a friend with combat-related PTSD? Now, now there are a bunch of different avenues to do this, right? I mean, and the, the, the challenge in is figuring out, first and foremost, how to make contact with that person. I mean, meaningful, meaningful contact to where you can, uh, 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 you know, effectively approach them and say, hey, listen, you know, are you okay? Are you struggling? And, and is there anything I can do? Because a lot of times in society, what we want to do is we, we say, hey, man, if you ever need me, just give me a call, right? <laughs> you know, and we expect that somebody who's dealing with this open wound, this open sore is, you know, in the ravaged moment where they're tucked in their closet and screaming and crying and blubbering, that all of a sudden they're going to go, aha, let me call Rut on the, on the phone right now and reach out. Well, folks, that's not how it works. All right. You know, one of the big things is, you know, when when you're in this midst of this, this challenge, this craziness, you, I mean, a lot of this is this guilt that overwhelms you or why is this happening? And you're ashamed of it. You don't want to expose. You don't want to show everybody that you're afflicted or that you have problems or maybe you're not as strong or that you're suffering. So the last thing you want to do is, is reach out in these moments. So the, the, the thing is, is if you identify these signs and symptoms or you can get somebody, you know, make it in that childlike approach. Don't be threatening. Don't say, hey, listen, let me help you. Let me get in your mind. I can fix you. I mean, that's all, you know, the only person who can fix a person is themselves, but you can help guide them into certain things. So it really takes understanding the person, knowing the what, what, what they're presenting with, the signs and symptoms they're presenting, and, and getting them to have trust trust and faith in you. I mean, that's everything, right? I mean, I, we've talked about trust before on the, on, the, on the show. I mean, think about that. What is trust? Trust is the ability to, to expose your armor, to take that armor off and allow somebody to, to put hands on you emotionally and spiritually and physically, you know, to, to bring you in, to he, begin to heal you. And that's a challenge. Remember, people are raw from this pain. They're raw. They're really raw. I mean, these are open, bleeding, festering wounds. And the last thing they want is these things to be touched by somebody who they might think doesn't have any idea what they're talking about. And that's the truth. But so you have to be creative. You have to approach it with a childlike empathy. And you have to be able to gain trust first and foremost. And this may take a couple of weeks, folks. This may take time to build that trust up to, to where the, the opportunity presents itself for you to do that. All right. Do we got another one on Twitter there, Billy? Uh, yes, we do. This guy says, I work for a mental health agency and assist veterans, both young and old, with PTSD. How do you suggest we use frog logic? Oh, awesome question. I, I appreciate it. That's a great question. This guy works for mental health, uh, dealing with youth and adults that are suffering from PTSD. And he asked me, how does how can frog logic apply? All right. Well, frog logic is a program really designed to help people kind of begin building up the, the, the foundations of what they need to cope with life, right? So embracing fear, forging self-confidence, and living a team life. So within the, the first one, within my book, uh, Navy SEAL Training Self-Confidence, there are eight missions that you can use to apply. And like mission number one is have a positive attitude. And then there are four sub-steps within that that you can apply. So what you do is you take each one of those missions and you, you apply them at a month at a time. So you have an eight-month training program right there within the book. And in there, you have exercise routines that you do collectively as a team. Because there's one thing about physicality together that really creates a bond and builds the trust right? Because you're all helping each other get physically better. And so that is a great way to kind of cut through a lot of the emotional camouflage that we throw up that we don't allow people in. So physicality is a great way to start. Then you get into these discussions and I have some historical debriefs and some other cool stories in there. And then I have bud stories from my past about how these, these missions play a role in building that self-confidence. Because one of the greatest things that we, but people lack with PTSD is, is confidence. They don't believe that they can face these challenges head on anymore because they're so scared of them. So, you know, check the book out. Check Frog Logic, uh, Navy SEAL Train Self-Confidence. If you're interested, you can download it on, on iBooks, on Kindle, Nook, Kobo, or you can buy a paperback off my, my, my website at teamfroglogic.com forward slash store um, and, and try that. All right. And, and let me know how that works. And, and if you want to hit me up on my website, contact email, and I'll, and I'll help you format a, a more, a, a more focused program for you. All right. All right. So um, we got a caller online here. I'm going to take this call and see what, uh, what it's all about. All right, here we go. Hello. Welcome to Navy SEAL blog talk radio. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. 
Hello, welcome to Navy SEAL Blog Talk Radio. You're on the air. All right, again, that's not coming through. All right, no big deal. All right, we're going to go to another question. I got one right here off, off Facebook. Okay, from an outsider, I don't have PTSD, but I am military. How do you distinguish between depression, PTSD, and something temporary? At what point do you need to intervene or let them work through it? Okay, very distinct differences between depression and PTSD, all right? Uh, Hyperarousal is is not depression, all right? There are de- most people with PTSD have depression as well, too, but depression is something brought on by a, a different form, of, a different set of circumstances, and can be relatively treated if with some 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 not as advanced type of, of, of technique, so to speak. People with PTSD are presenting really, you know, exacerbated signs and symptoms. Those are the people that really need, need help. And, and how you intervene is, you know, you've got to step in and with those kid gloves and make the difference. You've got to approach them and get them to open up a little bit to, to, to do something with them. If not, if they're, if they're, if it's at work, you know, you know, be careful by bombarding. Don't ever do that. Cause you're going to just totally make people even more afraid to address it and all that. So th- Find the subtle ways. Find the expert who you know or somebody around and introduce them that way, okay? Get them talking, discussing in a trust environment, and, and hopefully that'll get them going, all right? Hopefully that'll get it going and, and, and they'll be able to, you know, uh, they'll have some confidence that, okay, this is, I, I need to have this happen. So I, I hope that helps right there. Um, do we got any more Twitter questions there over there? Okay, all right. So I uh, got another story on here about a guy that was... Uh, um, and saying that he was never willing to accept the fact that he, he had PTSD. He was in the military and, you know, he'd been, a, been in the army, you know, he'd seen a lot of stuff and, and he'd seen convoys blow up, but you know, he, he wasn't quite sure that it really affected him. You know, he didn't know if it was really happening. And, and he goes on to tell this really amazing story and, and about an incident in particular when, when, you know, you know, this guy committed suicide and how, and just how he saw this environment beginning to unfold. And, and so, you know, there is a challenge that we all face within going through those incidents where, you know, the recognition that it's really happening. And that's why I started the show out with that kind of intention, that kind of force is that, folks, this is real. PTSD is a real thing. And if you're going through it, you know it's real. And the people around you, you know it's real too. But you got to act. You got to do something. You got to be forceful enough. But with, you know, with that empathy, with that trust involved. And and you got to get people to heal, begin to heal their wounds, right? And we talked about that through the show. And we talked about why it's important in your life and the trauma, the reality of these wounds, these negative scars that are in your life that need help. And we went through and we talked about how Navy SEALs deal and cope with it in combat and the, the brotherhood and the team they have. And then we talked about the frog logic concepts of being truthful, be in the moment, you know, put your armor on by loving yourself and begin to heal yourself. So folks, that's that's the first episode. So next week we're going to have PTSD episode two. I'm going to have some great guests on and next week's show is about positive scarring. So t- next week I'm going to talk all about positive ways to begin to heal programs that are out there, ideas from Wally, unbelievable stories from Stacy. I mean, this is going to be another amazing, powerful show that is really going to be make help you make changes in your life or help you change other people. So please tune in next weekend at 0930 on Saturday morning Eastern Standard Time for Navy SEAL Blog Talk Radio. So folks, thanks to all the people that have been in my life that have helped me make it through my challenges, the people who have loved me, and especially the, the faith through God that has gotten me through this. So thank you for listening. I'm your host, David Rutherford, Navy SEAL, motivational speaker, behavioral training specialist, author, and life coach. And it's my mission to help you embrace your fears, forge your self-confidence, and learn to live the team life. Oh yeah, one last thing. Don't ever forget, I'm your new swim buddy. Let's get motivated. Ow!